All right, this is going to be hopefully uh, one or a few videos on the most, the biggest reasons why not to upgrade to Windows 10. They have nothing to do with the way Windows 10 itself actually works. It has to do with the licensing of it. So I'm going to go through this, and the links, as you're going to see in the video, will be in the video description. You will be able to read for yourself on site at Microsoft that these things that I'm saying are in their own words. Hopefully I've established by now that I'm interested in due diligence. What people choose to believe or like or do is their own affair, whether it's the Bible or Windows. And my interest is show you the source text. And the source text here is very disturbing. Unlike prior Windows, the source text here of the license here with Windows 10 here is so disturbing that you really shouldn't get it. Okay, and I'm going to back up what I'm saying here. Why? And if you disagree, please tell me why. All right. Here is the topic in the group of Windows 10 updating to Windows 10. This is from my PC World Alumni Forum. I have written out a comprehensive set of pros and cons going all the way down. Okay. Beginning at, this is the first post, which is the preview overview. Then you've got latest news, this is the second post. And then you've got the table of contents, which is the third post. And you're just supposed to use these with your back button, okay, to look at the very different sections in here or possibly elsewhere on the issues listed. So much for that. But I'm going to be focusing on the license, which is primarily contained in, in multiple parts, but I need to show you how to read it because Microsoft did a very bad job of writing it. Okay, the license itself, which is right here, is linked in this set of posts down here in latest news, okay, because it's in multiple languages. Okay, this would be the English use terms, but you can pick a different language. All right. And then the page I'm going to show you next, the actual page of the actual license for Microsoft Windows 10 is right here. That's this link right here. Okay? Use terms. And notice it says here retail. The terms don't have any, when you read them, they aren't like normal retail terms of the past. In fact, there's so very little here that is like the past licenses of Microsoft. Okay, but you don't know that if all you do is skim over the text. What's the kicker here are what are called these things here. You are, the entire agreement includes supplemental license terms that accompany the software and any linked terms. Linked. Linked. Because all of the terms are important, and here we go, together create this agreement that applies to you. Now, in formal legal language, which they're simplifying here, it means that the agreement that you clicked on is not merely this page in front of you, but it includes all of the linked items. Okay? The trouble is, this is what the link is that. You have to paste that into your browser. Well, when you're first installing Windows 10, you don't have a browser. So there's nothing that you can paste it in. In other words, until you click on this and agree, you don't know what you agreed to. And once you find out, you're going to scream. And I'm going to show you. But the first part is I have to show you that they've screwed it up as usual by saying, well, you see, the link terms are part of this agreement, and instead of there being an actual link here, you have to literally take that, copy it, go to a new tab, paste and go, and this particular one doesn't work. The first link does not work. You can't, you, you can sign in with your Microsoft name. This is for an educational channel. So it doesn't work. So you got you got a link here 
that you're supposed to paste in a browser that is part of the agreement you signed, and that first one doesn't even work. Now, in a court of law, what you could do is you could argue that the whole license is defective because this part of it's defective. Usually, a judge won't give in to that. He'll just say, well, you're not bound by the part of it that's defective. Well, okay, so whatever this really was supposed to say for schools, you're not obligated by that. Okay, fine. But now, notice, and notice how badly it's formatted. In fact, to get rid of that, I have to change this to no style. There. See, now it's better formatted. Okay, then it's default style. Okay, so now you, what you've noticed, okay, is that it's still the same license. I've just changed the style so you can read it better. Okay. Then this is just talking about who is the party to which this agreement applies. If you bought your computer, for example, from Dell, then your license is with Dell and Microsoft is a third party. Okay. Not the direct party with you and Microsoft. So Dell is being included in here if Dell is the one that you bought your computer from and your um, Windows 10 is say part of the Dell computer that you bought it on otherwise you you're contracting with Microsoft okay and as I showed you this was the link I just showed you that link doesn't work that goes to a school where you have to sign in and your sign in Microsoft account won't work with that school because it's a school it's some kind of school account. So it's defective. But a judge would say, well, the parts of it that are defective, you didn't agree to. Okay, well, then what are you agreeing to? Well, let's look. By accepting this agreement or using the software, you agree to. All of these terms, remember, that includes all of the linked terms. See? including any supplemental and link terms. You're agreeing to all of these terms. Everything that accompanies the software and any link terms that are in the agreement and the links look like that. And you're agreeing to all of them. You're agreeing to the transmission of certain information during activation. You know what that means transmitting your own identity and everything else to Microsoft. They don't make it real clear that that's what it says, does it? But it's not so unclear that you can claim not to know what it is. Okay? This agreement applies to the Windows software that's pre-installed in your device or acquired from a retailer installed by you, media in which you receive the software, blah, 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 blah. Okay, in this case, you downloaded the download tool in order to do your upgrade to Windows 10 for free. And that means it's between you and Microsoft. Additional Microsoft and third-party terms may apply to your use of certain features. Services. This is going to be a keyword here. Services and apps. Depending on your device's capabilities, blah, blah, blah. Okay, be sure to read them. Yeah, be sure to read them because here's the one that you really want to read next. This little baby right here. Some Windows apps provide an access point to or rely on online services. And the use of those online services is sometimes governed by separate terms and pri privacy policies, such as, and we're going to look at this, and this will be the balance of the video. The Microsoft Services Agreement at AKA MSMSA. Now you're supposed to know, even though that doesn't look like a real link, that you're supposed to do what I just did, highlight it, right click, copy, go to a new tab, into your search bar, paste and go. That is the Microsoft Services Agreement which I already did here. Now let's take a look at the Microsoft Services Agreement. Now remember how you got there. That is a link. It's called, in, in the legal term for this, is called incorporation by reference. Anything that's incorporated by reference is made part of the agreement that's physically in front of you. 
And therefore, when you're signing off on it, you're agreeing to all the parts that aren't specifically listed, but are rather, as it were, alluded to, or in this case, parenthesized. Okay? That link right there and highlighted in dark blue is this whole thing. You have agreed to it when you clicked on your installation of Windows 10. This is what you agreed to. Now let's have a look at what this is. And it starts out, oh, your privacy is real important to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, really? Then your content. Yeah, purposes allow you to do this, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Many of our services allow you to store or share your content or receive material from others. We don't claim ownership, and your content is yours, and you are responsible. Okay, well, that makes sense. Then what about down here? To the extent necessary to provide the services, that's Microsoft now, to you and others, to protect you and the services, to protect you and the services, and to improve Microsoft product and services, you grant to Microsoft a worldwide and royalty-free intellectual property license to use your content. Now, think about that. When Microsoft taps your machine, because you're using their services, they have a worldwide and royalty-free intellectual property license to use your content. You got cat pictures, they can use them. You got a contract, you're writing a very sensitive contract with a client, they got access to it on me. And they can use it because you granted them, highlighted in blue, a worldwide and royalty free intellectual property license to use your content. Now they just finished saying that it's your content. But they're now saying, hi, everything that's on your computer, we got a right to use it. Is that what you thought you were buying into when you clicked on that I agree? I bet not. You got your birth date on there. You got your, your family's birth dates on there. You got sensitive correspondence on there. If you do work on your computer, which most people do, then you got client data on there. You got data with respect to people who are really important to you. What if you're a physician? You got patient data on there. Okay, well see, look highlighted in blue in front of your face. You just granted Microsoft a worldwide and royalty free intellectual property license to use your content. Okay, but it's not just about you, is it? But it is your content because it's on your machine. In other words, your entire machine, and no matter what's on it, is open to Microsoft. Now, I don't know if you realize how unconstitutional that is. That violates something, in the United States anyway, and other countries have it too, having to do with what's considered to be unreasonable search and seizure. Your government, chances are, I mean, in the United States, this is definitely true, but in other countries, I can't say for sure. But generally speaking, specifically and most importantly in the United States, as far as I'm concerned, because I live here, the United States government cannot just come into my house and search for whatever it wants. It has to get what's called a warrant. It has to demonstrate that it has some kind of sufficient proof that I am likely to be guilty of a crime and therefore they have the justification to search my house. Well, see, this stuff right in front of you highlighted in blue, they're not, they're, there's, no, there's no warrant. You're already just saying, hi, come on in, search me. 
And a lot of people will say, because they're so stupid on the internet, especially in CDNet, where all the Windows, the Windows fanboys congregate, the mindless people. They say, well, I don't have anything to hide. Honey, it's not about you. It's about other people in your life who might write you an email, who you might work for, who you might do something for. Microsoft should not have a right to just scan anything on your computer at once. And it certainly should not have the right to be able to see about other what other people send you or what other things about other people are on your computer. It should not have that right. And look how tangled this gets. What if you're corresponding with some firm in Saudi Arabia? It's likely to be pretty sensitive stuff. What if you're corresponding with some firm in Britain or Germany or Japan? Why should Microsoft have the right to see what's on your machine about other people in other countries? See, because a country is sovereign over its people. Well, now Microsoft is sovereign over your data, no matter where you live. What happened to the rights of your country? What happened to your rights? What happened to the rights of, you know, the town you live in? You have a local polity with police and taxation and all that. They have certain rights to you because you live there. You don't live in Microsoft. Microsoft shouldn't have this right over all of your content. That even if you lived in the United States, the United States doesn't have the right over my content of my computer. My own government in my own country who ought to have the right over me because I live here. They don't have the right over the content on my machine. But highlighted there in blue, honey, Microsoft has the right. Do you see what a mess this is? You won't find this in any of the prior Windows licenses anywhere. But it gets worse. Here we go. Here's the worst part. Paragraph number three, Code of Conduct. In order to use their software, you have to hold to a code of conduct, excuse me? By agreeing to these terms, you're agreeing that when using the services, you will follow these rules. Don't do anything illegal. Huh? Illegal. What's legal in Britain? might not be legal in the United States. What's legal in Saudi Arabia might not be legal in the United States. In Saudi Arabia, I'm not 100% sure there are laws like this, but a lot of Arab countries do. An 85-year-old man can marry a 9-year-old girl and consummate the marriage. That's legal under Sharia law in some Arab countries. That's not legal here. So what does it mean, don't do anything illegal? Is Microsoft now my country supplanting my country? I live in the United States. Maybe you live in Germany. Is Microsoft now your ruler instead of Germany or the United States? Don't do anything illegal. Illegal by whose definition? So if Microsoft thinks you're doing something illegal, then you don't get their services. And they say down here, enforcement. What, Microsoft is my policeman? Microsoft, I don't belong. I'm not an American anymore, but I'm a Microsoft person. So I lost my American citizenship. Or if I'm a German or if I'm French, hello, enforcement? If you violate these terms, and I haven't gone through all of them, I've only gone through the first one. Don't do anything illegal. Well, what happens if I do something illegal, Microsoft? You're not a country. You don't have troops. Oh, but if you violate these terms, we may stop providing services to you. Or we may close your Microsoft account or Skype account. 
Okay, so what, you can shut down my computer? If in your opinion, I do something illegal? Huh? No prior Windows license ever had anything like this in it. No prior license of any kind I've ever seen, even if you're buying a gun had a code of conduct clause for purchasing it. And they'll say, well, but you're just purchasing a license, a, you know, a license to use. Yes, and I have lots of licenses. And none of them say, don't do anything illegal. Why? Because the company is not the government. This is, this is violating the separation of business and state. This should be unconstitutional in every single government on earth. Don't do anything illegal by whose opinion and enforcement. If you violate these terms, we may stop providing services. Who gives you the right to brick my machine? You see the point? We may block delivery of communication. In other words, you can stop my email too. We may remove or refuse to publish your content. You may remove my content. You can remove what's on my machine. I'm an American. My country determines what can happen to my machine. Not you, Microsoft. Now, for the word American, what if you're German or Saudi Arabian? Fine, stick that name in because that's who you are. Microsoft should not allow... The, the countries of the world should not allow this this whole thing to be in it. It should be un, it's definitely unconstitutional in the United States, but you have to take Microsoft to court in order to get it declared unconstitutional. You know how long that takes? Five to seven years before it'll get to court because it'll have to go to the Supreme Court. So meanwhile, are you going to wait five to seven years for Microsoft's action and clause here to be declared unconstitutional? Which, by the way, when you clicked I agree, since this, the services agreement is part of the agreement, and this is a supposed link, and here's the text, you've already agreed to this. Is this what you meant to agree to? It isn't what I meant to agree to. But I was an insider, and the links didn't work, and I badgered Ed Bott about it, and he said, well, they're, they're not going to work until release day. But I had already agreed to it. Don't do anything illegal. Microsoft, I'm sorry, I'm an American. You don't own me. You do not own me. You don't own my content. You don't own my machine. You don't own anything. And so I am getting rid of Windows 10. And as if it were that weren't bad enough. Don't engage in any activity that exploits, harms, or threatens to harm children. By whose standards? Now you're saying you have more rights over children than the parents of those children. Because in the mind of one parent, it's, well, you should sp spank the child. Okay, but another parent will say, oh, you're exploiting and harming children. And will call, you know, the local social you know, department and say, well, so-and-so spanked Johnny, their kid, and therefore that's harming Johnny. What, is Microsoft going to step in the middle of that? Jane Doe uses her computer, and it's a Microsoft 10, Word, Windows 10. Just use Windows 10. And then while she's using Windows 10, Johnny comes in the room, knocks down a glass of water, and she spanks him with her hands. The neighbor next door sees it, calls up Microsoft and says, well, Jane just spanked her child and harmed him. So now Microsoft has to step in. You see, even before we call it unconstitutional, which it clearly is, you're talking lawsuits and craziness out the wazoo because who determines the meaning of these terms? Who determines illegal? Who determines what constitutes harm for children? Okay? Don't send spam? 
Spam is unwanted or unsolicited bulk mail, postings, contacts, or instant messages. Honey, everybody sends spam. I happen to hate it. I would never do it. But if Joe Blow attorney is moving and he sends out to a thousand clients bulk email and people don't like the fact that they got that notice, of course it's important, but what constitutes unwanted or unsolicited? So Joe Blow attorney sends out his change of address to a thousand of his clients. One of the clients that he had hates him. And, and therefore goes to Microsoft and says, okay, Joe Blow attorney is guilty of sending out spam. So what, now Microsoft has to set it, step in and play judge? See how it gets worse and worse. So you're replacing my country by determining what's illegal. You're replacing parenthood by determining what harms children. You're replacing even a lawyer because if somebody who doesn't want him can now go to Microsoft and say, well, see, I got, I got unwanted bulk mail. Just because the guy was notifying you that he moved. And Microsoft is going to have to sit in on all that? So how much time are they going to have to make their operating system better? Hmm? Don't publicly display or use the services to share inappropriate content involving nudity, bestiality, pornography. Okay, so a doctor has nude photos of his patient that he needs to share with another doctor to make a diagnosis. So is that inappropriate content? <coughs> a policeman needs to send shots to another policeman in another city of some graphic violence that occurred because he's trying to establish whether the violence that occurred in the other city is made by the same person. In other words, you have like a serial killer or something. So what? He can be shot down because he used his device to send a graphic picture of graphic violence to another policeman? And of course, criminal activity. What's that? Criminal activity depends on the polity. So there again, you know, Microsoft is usurping what constitutes criminal activity. So since when did I become a citizen of Microsoft and no longer a citizen of my own country? See? And it gets worse, okay? Don't engage in activity that's false or misleading. Okay, but that again... Who defines what's false and misleading? The examples are just examples. That's not all inclusive. Somebody can say, you, you know, you wrote them a letter and you said, hi, you know, your roof, you said that your roof fell in. I came out and I looked at it. It looks like it's going to cost $800 to fix, but I'm not 100% sure. That's just an estimate. Okay, and it ends up costing $2,000 to fix because there were a bunch of squirrels that were nesting around, you know, some of the shingles or whatever. And so now there's damage several layers down. So now they can go to Microsoft and say, well, when Joe Blow sent me that email, it was false or misleading. So Microsoft is going to be involved in litigation out the wazoo. What? kind of agreement is this? Okay? And then my favorite one is don't engage in activity that violates the privacy of others. Okay, but if I'm going to follow that, don't engage, see, don't engage in activity that violates the privacy of others. Well, then in order to fulfill that code of conduct, okay, then I am not going to be sharing my contact content with Microsoft. See, because here, look, 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 this is how I said it at the beginning. To extend necessary to provide the services to you or others to protect you and the services to improve Microsoft products and services, you grant to Microsoft a worldwide and royalty free intellectual property license to use your content. No qualification about what kind of content your content, 
anything on your machine. Well, doesn't that violate your privacy? Doesn't that violate the privacy of everybody who you wrote an email to and the emails on your machine? Don't engage in activity that violates the privacy of others? Well then, honey, if I'm going to obey that code of conduct rule, then the number one thing I need to do is not adopt Windows 10. Peace out.